just about seeing where JDG go, and I'm surprised. Not leaning into either. For TS here, I I would expect you just go towards the Varus. You have yeah. the, early, the early lane pressure that you can put up. It obviously goes well into the Azir because of the range you could play with. Ooh. You know, in the de on the desk, they were highlighting that this has been, I mean, more of a ruler champion. He's played it once in playoffs, but Jackie Love hasn't actually brought it out yet in playoffs. It was second most played champion in the regular season. It's been surprising to see TS gear away from it, but it's nice to see them still coming back in. And hell, they don't want to play the range game with that Varus. They want to go all in. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's kind of the opposite of what oh, we saw what? in the previous series where it was Varus every game for Jackie Lewis. It's left open. Feels like Top Esports saying, look, we reckon you've got a plan for the Varus, so we're just not going to go anywhere near it. Well, actually, it becomes a little bit more confusing after the first two picks, <laughs> right? Because you take the Corky, you know, having having those Varus arrows right alongside that to counteract these ears, in my mind, sounds like it makes a lot of sense. But they don't go with that. We're going to see how Cream's going to be able to handle this because uh, let's be real, LPL Corkies have been a little bit cursed, has not been able to work out. JDG, though, will get the Varus coming out for Ruler and even the Nico in support. So JDG really leaning into the aggressive 2v2. Wait a second. What is going on? Is this a Corky? No, it okay. like I, if, I shouldn't have talked about hovers. I shouldn't have talked about hovers. Much if the Huey got locked in, it would have been a Huey support. I could promise you, it would yeah, not okay, have been yeah, the no, That makes a lot more <laughs> not sense. Have been the I just like because I'd already locked in that the Corky was mid. My brain was doing somersaults. So I was like, <laughs> hang on a second. The hard engaged Corky support with aftershock. I'm here for it. Every package maker. Anyway, moving on. It's gonna be Tian locking in uh, the Zintao jungle. Immediate Jack's man to follow. I love it because. Again, when we're highlighting, hey, Kanavi potentially moving away from the rel, you look at things he's found success on. Lee Sin, Xin Zhao, uh, Jax. Jax was the other thing he picked up a win on against NIP in that series. Of course, a great pick into the Xin Zhao. So I like the takeaway. Now I wonder if they feel any onus to try and deny that Lee Sin. I don't know if I necessarily love it in what JDG's comp has to offer, but Kanavi really hasn't been showing all too much so far in playoffs. Things something like the else. Wukong as well is something he's really been leaning into heavily. It would work really well with that composition as well, right? Where you've already got a lot of team fight presence in the Nico, the, the follow up for the ultimates, the Azir that can knock you, knock into the Cyclone or the Cyclone to set up for the knockback. Either way works. Certainly could be a solid Wukong angle if they do want to lean into the team fighting. But one concern is, do you want to heavily lean into team fighting again? Because it's not really been working out against top esports. The Rumble removed as a potential uh, sort of carry support option for Mako. I suppose you could see that for 369 top as well, but I yeah. only expect the support pick to come on through here for top esports. And I mean, the Rumble was a support ban, right? Because now without Rumble and without Ash, you really have this, you're really missing that same level of aggressive, aggressive options that you typically see against the Nico, which is something you would have wanted to contest with. And now out of left field, we actually have the Leona coming through. I feel like this should be a really dicey time down in the 2v2, but I'm excited to see how Jackie Love and Mako can try to make it work. I mean, it's a classic. It's something Mako's got plenty of experience on, and also it's tanky. It can survive the Nico all in, which could be valuable. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Flandrake goes back to the wreck side once more. We have to see what Kanavi is going to lean into. Looks like full dive on the side of JDG. I was like, man, how many times am I going to get baited by Hovers today? I feel like we need to get a tally going up on the stream. As uh, It's going to be a carry jungle, and that's what I want to see from Kanavi. Yeah, already showing again so some of those likely options that we hit on. He's going to end up with the Lee Sin, I guess maybe the, the amount of mobility that's coming through from things like the Callista and the Corky. But I got to be honest, I'm, I'm not even sure how... Okay, actually, yeah, th that's how you round up this composition. They picked the Rex side of the Ear God. But again, uh, I'm kind of questioning the, the, the Corky pickup in the draft. It looks very out of place, especially once you, you added in the Leona. You have this complete composition that just wants to fully send it onto the Azir and the Varus. Is it, hang on, is this like a long range one tap comp from top esports where you Leona ult someone and Jackie loves lethality Callista QEs, Q, yeah. a rocket comes in from Cream and then 369 ult lands and just like pulls him in and finishes the job. Like, <laughs> I am I all, it's I'm a all bizarre up for it. angle, but I could see it. Yeah, I'm completely, completely down with that combo. But for JDG, 
again, like even more proactive options, right? Bringing Lee Sin into the jungle and especially that bot lane dynamic with the 2v2. Uh, I think a lot's going to be up to how Missing plays the game to ensuring that they could really just set Jackie Love and Mako as, as far behind as possible. They should then have Pryo bot contesting in mid early on. Top will be the one area of weakness. But honestly, for JDG, you could really just try to snowball this out with the pressure that the Nico gives you. Feels like there's an opportunity for Ruler and Missing to prove their quality in this bot lane matchup. They've been given a chance here where they have the Varus for the first time in this matchup across the course of playoffs. They've got a Nico for Missing as well. Plenty of power to work with. Can they make it stick against Mako's Leona and Jackie Loves Callista? It's going to be tough. And again, Fortius, how do they bring this all together? What's the glue that holds the comp? Is it like you said, Munch? Everyone throws about one ability. You set it up for 369. I got to say, if that was the plan after 369's performance in game one, I don't mind it. Time for game number two, though. Let's see if things change up here as JDG enter the blue side of the rift and look for revenge for game number one. Just want to give a warm welcome as well to any LCK enjoyers that are now joining us. We've got our three big classics in JDG Top Esports on your screen right now. We've had T1 Gen G. I'll not give any spoilers just in case. Um, but then also G2 versus Fnatic later on in LEC. It's a big day for League of Legends today. And we're into the second game. If you missed the first game, Top Esports fell behind a tiny bit in the early game, but their mid game was immaculate. And we saw once again, this Urgot versus the Rek'Sai as a top lane matchup for 369. And 369 gonna need to do a lot. Uh, get TES up there, get them to that finals because right, this, this is for it all. Making it back to finals, getting a chance to, to pick up another LPL title and especially making it to MSI. Uh, we are the last major region to not have our, our teams for MSI already squared as Ruler engaged on. Aggressive start already from top esports, which is what you want to see. I am really curious to see how on earth this Leona works out for Mako. Feels like forever since I saw a Leona. I think there has been like one or two Leona picks uh, in professional over the last or a year or so, but the fact that you can say that after how prolific the pick has been historically, especially like 2020, 2021, it was like every other game, it was the answer to Nautilus, and another Zenith Blade lands onto Ruler. That's a flash and a heal out from JDG. And it's great to see the amount of pressure Mako's playing with, because even though Varus, you know, is strong in lane, your level one actually really isn't all that good. Uh, being gated by cooldowns, Callista and Leona will just be able to run you down. So I love how aggressively Mako has been playing. And Jackie Love and Mako, once again, finding ways to at least be able to keep up Pryo in this lane. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact that you don't have access to the Blighted Quiver to activate your E, essentially, like the E is yeah. so good after the Halo Blades, after the W comes in. Uh, but if you don't have the W, you can't really do a lot with it. Tien, though, moving down to this bottom side, there's no camps available, and Kanavi's pathing topside. This could be a dive angle as Ruler. Level two at this point, missing still only level one. This could be dangerous. I think he might be level two, and it's just Nico doing Nico things. There we go. Dive angle could be terrifying. The minion wave not that big right now is level three hit by Jackalove and Mako. The JDG bot lane not that chunked right now. As the minion wave moves in, Tien is committing to the dive. Missing the target here. Ruler underneath the tower, though, and just gets obliterated. Mako moves out. Tien, you've got to get out from underneath the tower, but he just jumps straight onto Missing. Diving back under Jackalove. Wide on the queue. Missing survives. <laughs> Luckily gets away in the end. We're going to see if TS decide to commit to this again with how they're pulling the wave over. Looks like they decide against it in the end, but still, that is everything. You're going to want finding one, denying some CS off Ruler and getting Tien accelerated on the Xin Zhao. It's the fact that you even get a bonus wave crash at the end there. So yeah. this wave will be slowly stacking up towards Dracula as well. So even though they're even in CS now, that won't stay the case as Kanavi wants an answer. But yeah, you just can't gank mid lane. It's just not possible anymore. 
No, it, it feels it feels incredibly hard just because of the map changes. You have two mobile mid laners here right now. Post six, you know, there'll be some opportunity, right? But you got to go for the, the shuffle and you try to time it perfectly into the queue coming out from the Lee Sin and, and burst scream out before he really is time to actually counteract the play. But this early, it is impossible. Nice grab there from 369. Ooh. Big damage onto Flandre, who will be essentially kicked out of lane here. There's no way he can come back towards this minion wave. So 369 will force a TP out of his opposing laner. And that fleet footwork going to do so much to try and match the sustain <laughs> that the Rek'Sai is going to bring to that top lane. And right, even though JDG opened it up again after that game one, it could be like, hey, why would they do that? That caused them their loss. At the same time, they did draft against it much better, right? You have an Azir, you have a Varus, so you're playing a lot more from range and it's not getting up close and personal where the Urgot does thrive. So ideally here, they're hoping 369 shouldn't even be able to find an impact come team fights later on. Kanavi moving down to the bottom side, wants to influence some of these fights, but in fact, could potentially look towards the Drake instead, has a control ward in the pit. Skull to oh. Crab in favor of Top Esports. He, he's not committing yet. I'm kind of yeah. confused why he's just kind of stood nearby. <laughs> well, I think it'd be very over ambitious to go for it. I mean, right, you're facing up against the Callista Leona. They have Pryon Bot. They could move easily. But at the same time, you are also facing a Corky in mid, where you got will be able to bring a lot more impact early on. So it seems like maybe weighing their options before ultimately deciding to just head up towards that top side. Just taking a moment to decide and instead goes up top, heads towards the grubs as Tien pulls the Drake out of the pit. So this will be just a trade of objectives here. Kanavi, let's see how many grubs he can get. Obviously 369. Uh, I don't have to do too much. Yag out heavy trades in the mid lane. Nice advantage over Cream. And that level six means that Cream really can't trade back too aggressively. No, in, in a rough spot, but still, at the very least, I like that JDG quickly realized, hey, actually, TS are going to be the ones who are going to be able to take this objective bot again. They have the Kalista. This should be their win con. Uh, and immediately pivots up towards the top side to be able to get this. It even gives Fondre a bit more freedom to play aggressively, but they'll need to watch out. Yeah, 369. We'll look for any angle to punish up there. I mean, what we saw in game number one was a relatively even laning phase where they pretty much left the lane at a reasonably similar amount of CS, but it was once we got to those sort of early to mid-game fights, that's where this Urgot really came into its own. Cream really feeling the wrath of Yagao's Azir in the mid lane, forces Cream back and doesn't have that TP, so nice advantage found in the mid lane by Yagao should be able to build him a little bit of a CS lead to work with. Yeah, and right, that's going to be crucial because you look, and like you pointed out, TS are already having a, a lead in bot. So being able to try and equalize that somewhere else is huge. And again, we really have not seen Gorky's in the LPL be able to work out, whether it be from the laning phase where you are incredibly weak and you're getting shut down or just some of the, yeah. the package angles that we see later on. Yeah, it's uh, it's left something to be desired, Lyric, I think is the, <laughs> the best way that we could politically refer to that. Here's a question. Since... Cream is the guy on all those champions that goes in, right? Akali, Silas, Kiana back in the day, you name him. Does that mean he should have much better packages? Or is he going to tunnel vision thinking he is one of those champions and send it in a way that Corky shouldn't and go down immediately? What do you think? I, I think it could go both ways. I think it, mm. it, we could have some pretty ham packages coming out from him. But equally, that could lead to big plays because I feel like, you know, if there's anyone that's going to be able to find the angle and watch on someone is he's a player that is incredibly mechanically proficient you expect him to be landing those rockets hopefully he will today i love that as well though in the early game top esports have kind of just signaled to everyone we're gonna play this a little bit slow both of their solo laners picking up a call to start the game as an rv back in the bot lane once more missing trying to find an angle but i don't think there's going to be a way to get in here and tn has even moved over they're making their way down, and they, they already have control of Vision and River. Might even find a timing. Okay, they've spotted Kanavi now. The ward there. And it looks like the junglers will respect one another. A lot of early game power on both sides, to be fair, between these two picks. And now, missing, able to move over towards his jungler. Secure vision control for the side of JDG. 
TN, of course, to the tower is Mako now. Wants to try and contest. We could have a bit of a scrap, honestly, between the two teams. Remember, Mako, very hard to kill now that the Fates Call is online as well. Yeah, and you look at for TS's side especially, right? You have no camps up in your own side of the jungle, no neutral objectives, tangle barbs. Yeah, nothing going to come from this. So they, they, I held the only thing for TS to, to do or fight for on the map really was only that Scuttle Crab. This is such a strange extended standoff between the teams. Oh, Cream dodges away from Yagao's ultimate. He'll be very happy with that. Has that X Drinker as well as his first item. So can withstand the lane a little bit better. And with that ultimate on cooldown, he can happily just walk up and clear the wave. We'll be able to withstand the lane better, but it does mean his power spike is going to be delayed even further, which is maybe another reason why TS or have been fine taking this one slow. So we've seen Tien really just focusing on keeping his farm up, but 25 seconds until that next take of grubs, you know it's something that TS is going to be playing to deny. It certainly will be, especially with how well 369 did in some of those early scraps early on in the game. It definitely doesn't feel like a fight that JDG want to be taking on the top side. But then there was a couple of fights last game that I didn't think JDG would want to be taking. We'll see if they change tact here. They do have the Nico as well. Like That's one thing that really does shift power in the game where the Nico is just so good in these early skirmishes if you can get that ultimate off. Nico's moved over though. First group taken. And it doesn't really look like JDG are willing to contest this. No, not going to opt into it in the end. It makes sense, right? The package being in play, you already have so much pressure coming out from top side with the year out. You can see that way pushed in is cream. Should be fine, actually. Yeah. At the winning end of the trade. I mean, manages to find essentially just an all in onto missing. That's two summoners burnt. Ult for ult. I mean, I guess ult for package. Does package. I feel like package counts as Corky's ult. Like the rockets are so non ultimate and the, the package is very I don't... ultimate. I don't yeah, know if it, if, it, if it could, though, because, right, the package is going to disappear no matter what. So at that point, it's like, well, we've already gotten the grubs. Kareem can send it wherever he wants, and he's fine. So he actually found some value as compared to if he had just actually wasted an ult that, you know, maybe he could have saved for a better situation. That's true. That's true. This, see, this is why you're the color caster. See, you've got the, that massive cranium. I, I honestly don't know how you stand up straight. It must be so heavy. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. It's, you know, it's over over the years, it's, you know, trimmed down a lot. But it's a you know, <laughs> you've learned to bear. <laughs> but Dragon's up. And both these teams actively wanting to fight this again. There's no package this time. Kanavi. Kick onto two as Kanavi keeps himself alive. Yagao forced out on the top side of the fight, but the chains land. Tien forced to use his credit card, forced to flash as well. Flandre's followed him in here. 369 is still up top right now. Top esports. They fully retreat. They concede the Drake, but they get a solo lane at top that gets to just farm. Yeah, so making the conscious choice. Hey, it's fine. They've committed five members here. They get the objective. Now it's about getting some plates on the 369 which he looks like he should be able to do. But at the same time, it means JDG have shut down the, the super early Drake threat that the Kalista does normally provide. Not too much gained from 369. Just doesn't have that maxed out W yet. That's where the uh, tower taking potential of Urgot really is just horrific to witness when you can toggle the W on and off. But still, a plate gathered. And both of those kills very close to popping. We're getting to the point where first time completions are going to start coming through across uh, the top esports lineup. And I feel like that is... Uh, I, I was going to say that's where maybe they start to do things. But honestly, with the Corky, maybe they wait for another item. Right, and, and that's why it's going to be interesting to see how they decide to pilot this and, and why it was a bit interesting to see them put this here as three yank towards mid. It's onto a wreck side. Can you actually finish this kill? The flash into the tunnel seems not. And uh, at least you're getting a flash out from him. Still an advantage taken. I love the pathing down towards spot. You can see Dracula going to be able to start pushing up this wave. Now, we've already seen there's nothing you have to be afraid of <laughs> when Missing comes running at you by himself. Is going to be able to dissuade the red buff, though, with the knowledge that Kanavi is close in the wings. Be able to go for that rebuff. So resets across the board from top esports, and honestly, a very, very quiet start to uh, to our third game, uh, second game, sorry here. And uh, it's kind of reminiscent of 
you know, in best of fives, especially in the lower bracket, quite often you do start getting some slower games. There's a lot on the line for both teams. However, JDG, very comfortable in a slower game. This feels like the style that they have preferred to play across the course of the year. You know, he's starting this Herald off. Yeah, I'm getting close to level 11. Have that, has that wit's end. It feels like JDG are definitely in a stronger point with their composition. And Top Esports not really going to commit to anything. No, I mean, TS, right? Multiple times now just committing to keeping 369 on a side wave, continuing to farm up and get pressure on those turrets. Not really being concerned about fighting just yet, which I guess does signal to us, right? Playing Really going to be playing around when they feel like Cream is strong and able to bring a lot to the table. Probably just going to keep playing off this package timings. Uh, that's where they'll feel most competent, but it is giving JDG a lot of freedom to start getting some of these neutrals. Cream knocked back, flashes, gets underneath the tower. Kanavi gets a bit of damage down. Will finish the job. I was a little bit nervous for a second there, but Kanavi walks away. Nice dive from JDG, punishing on the top side. That'll open up a tier one as well. And you can see there's no answer back by TS. Looks like Flandre did just willingly accept the backing off, so no angle was open. But now with this Herald, JDG could be able to do a lot of damage on top side. Yeah? They might just be able to finish a tier two here. Missing's here too. Doesn't look like they're going to commit in the end, but good amount of damage done on that top side. 369 wants to find Ruler. Both summoners available here for Ruler, immediately using the ultimate. And that's going to be it used from the side of top esports. They get a flash out from Ruler. And it's nice just to finally see them start to use 369 to move around, right? Because constantly we've seen JDG commit Flandre to the play, which gives 369 these windows where he pushed out the lane, has Pryo. Uh, finally seeing him find some influence on the map just by showing mid. I think we're going to have to see a bit more of that. Him starting to get involved with these fights. Blue team's been what a uh, what a surprising second game. When I saw Varus and Callista locked in, I saw Nico versus <laughs> Leona. I saw the Ergot top again. I saw Lee Sin versus Zin Zhao. You see the JDG like, versus the top esports. Yeah, I was like, this is going to be a banger. This is going to be game two. Pop it off again. But you know what? What I forgot to look at in the draft is Corky versus Azir. These damn mid laners ruining my LPL. I got to say, yeah. Munch, it, it, it's a complaint I see a lot online. But you know, we don't really, this matchup really doesn't exist here. Uh, we, we never, ooh, I need to. Okay, I was ready for missing to just absolutely send it. Maybe I do need to be ready for missing to absolutely send it. Corky and Azir, they don't matter. TS right now, pretty solid position with the fact that they have a lot of control over these brushes with their control wards. But at the same time, you look at where JDG is on the map. Flandre's already pushed out top. You cannot be leaning with the Egal bot side. It's giving them a lot of avenues to actually be the ones who can more up front, walk into river and really control that Drake. It does feel like Drake control right now, or at least River control in favor of JDG as they're trying to bully top esports away. But that control ward, meaning that Tien can stick around. Vision gained as Mako moves over to the team as well. 369 resetting, so is Yagao, both of them with TPs available. Flandre pushing in the top side right now. Oh, you got a TP up top from Yagao. They're going to try and trade this Drake for an inhib on the top side, but 369 is there. I don't think there's a way that they can push for more. I'm not sure Yagao needed to TP there. I feel no. like Flandre could have just took the tower by himself. Yeah, again, maybe reading that, that 369 would have gotten there a bit sooner and thinking they need the extra man or hoping to push a bit more, but I feel like that would have been overzealous, you know, at the best of times. Uh, but for JDG, I think it makes sense, right? You know Cream was picking up that package. You're like, hey, again, it, it's only the third Drake of the game. We both have one apiece. 369, though. Two-man play onto the Urgot. Can they bring down the crab man? Doesn't look like it right now. As Kanabi gets a flash kick. Maybe they can after all. Yag out the target, but 369 can do nothing. As JDG make the play to the top side, but Top Esports moving up to try and answer. They decide against it in the end. Great pick from JDG. Yeah, JDG. Again, I really feel like they're just being given so much freedom with what they're able to do. I, I love it now, starting to take away these camps and top side, getting your own vision deny TES the opportunity to really be able to pick up any gold so far. So far, so good. This is not only a great game from JDG, but also like, Top Esports, where are you? <laughs> this is not the Top Esports we've seen all year long. It feels like their, their control of the map just is not there right now. And Flandre even gets, wait, he can finish this tower before the TP comes through. 
Terrible TP comes through from 369 and uh, punished. This Urgot finally starting to, to feel like it doesn't have that impact. Yeah, and what, what a switch up from the game one performance, right? Where 369 absolutely took over. And then here we see now a couple times in a row he's, he's left sleeping. Gets punished, doesn't expect JDG to still be here because they just made that play on top. Maybe assuming that, that they're resetting, going to get back on the map with faster tempo. Leads him to going down. And yeah, the TP especially. What a, what a questionable... Oh, fight. Fight. Has uh, Ruler's just been caught. That's a huge pick for top esports. I really wish we could have seen the setup for that one. That's, uh, that's just a massive opportunity now. Or oh. is it? Yeah, Gao's having none of it. Kicks 369 underneath the tower. CN goes down as well. Two come through for JDG. So they look for more of the fight as well. Missing, getting out with his life. And they will walk away. Somehow, JDG win the fight. <laughs> Not somehow, right? It's all thanks to Yagao with that shuffle. And it's moments like that where, again, Yagao can just show up at the time where JDG needs him most and make sure that they stay in the lead. And hell, this could just bring us back to a bit of a retrospect overall, right? Of Kanabi going towards the Lee Sin, having the ability to, to be a little bit more part of the action. Because we're going to see Ruler trying to outrun this still after flashes get committed, even with heal, even with the cleanse being used. Uh, JDG just keep running him down, but keep your eyes on the Azir here. They get both members locked down with what looked like the Tangle Barbs and then sending 369 to No Man's Land. Tien is nowhere he's able to escape to. And sadly, Jackie Love on the Callista doesn't get to be part of any of the action. Yeah, I mean, Cream and Jackie Love were both essentially not quite in mid. Like, Jackie Love was in mid lane. Cream was towards mid lane. Like, neither of them even close to the play. So, a bit of miscommunication, which... Honestly, it's not something that we've said a lot about top esports this year. 369 and TN being way too aggressive. And Kanavi has been having such a good game. Yaga with a massive ultimate. Like, this feels like the game for JDG if there's going to be one in the series. This feels like the moment where they start to put their own foot down and start to have an impact. I mean, just like, look where we're at in, in terms of items, right? Especially for the Corky, only sitting on the Mirror Mana and the Hex Drinker. No Malignancy yet. You're so far away from dealing damage. Echo's Make been found, but the Fate's Call comes through from Jackie Love. Kanabi wants to punish, but won't be able to find his Q. Would have been really hype if he did find it. I wonder if he would have actually followed it through. Not like Kanabi, I feel like he probably would have. Uh, yep. would have given his life. This, this turret should go down. Top Esports trying their best to defend this one. Solar Flag goes wide Ooh. from Mako. And now Tien's called the bottom side of the play. Top Esports blast cone out safety, but Flandre looking for Cream as well. Still has the Valkyrie available and gets over to the rest of his team. But still, the tier one taken. And JDG now can move towards a tier two once again. They've got a lot of damage between these characters. They've got three groups to work with as well. The tier two, not something that Jackie can realistically defend by himself. Cream moves over for the wave clear, but it's too little too late. And it's JDG outmaneuvering top esports on the map. And this is the JDG that people wanted to see coming into playoffs. Great to finally see it online, pulling them apart again. A few missed skill shots there on both sides, leading to no fight being able to come through. But again, I mean, look at Yagao now. Two items, just picking up the Seekers too, so we're gonna have a bit more survivability in there. And I really feel like JDG should just be able to outpace whatever damage TS are, are putting out on the map at this time. Next straight coming up in two seconds time. A couple of resets coming through from the side of JDG as they try and get their side lanes in order. Reset from Cream as well. See, he's got his own TP package available. This feels like this has to be the moment for top esports. Yeah, they need to go for it. They're already having the TP come in from Kareem. We'll see if JDG even opt into contesting this, because again, it, it would be sole point for Tez, but it wouldn't be end of the world. This package has to be huge, and it's not. He just uses it defensively, as in the meantime, Mako is caught. It's too easy for JDG. Top Esports all over the place in this second game. And what a punish as well. JDG looking immaculate with this composition. And just no answer whatsoever from Tez. Yeah, JDG, they have the control of the area. They already have the setup with the Varus in his ear in place. And it's not even to necessarily blame, like, like Cream on the Corky in particular, but it really looks like uh, this is not the kind of game that TS were hoping to play. Uh, having to, like, waiting for these power strikes, waiting for these items to come online. The Malignants finally just got bought up. Uh, and again, it really didn't follow through with what I feel like with where the rest of their draft was really strong. And just TS as a team being incredible in some of those earlier skirmishes. Yeah. 
you have to wonder what Corky is doing in scrims <laughs> to be picked in a game like this because I have yet to see it really be that inspirational. We talked about it earlier. LPL Corky just simply like let's stick to the Lucian over here. You know, like we're good at the Lucian. Let's let's not worry about the Corky for now. Yeah, I agree. Keep it up with with the level of aggression. But now we're gonna start having to play around this top side of the map, right? Baron being up. Moons are probably gonna poke and prod our heads into enemy jungle for vision. We can go back all the way back in the replay here. Really no great angle for Cream to play around. I think JDG did a great job of like walking up as a group, forcing him back, not giving any time for 369 to come in. And it lets him separate the fight on two. Hell, even somewhat three fronts to start with, with how separated 369 yeah. even is from Cream. And part of that is off the back of the fates. Call was used on the previous play to save Mako. I think it was still on cooldown, so Mako quite out. 3,000 gold lead for JDG, and they can just start this Baron. Okay, Yagao has been spotted, so... I mean, full information for Toppy Sports, but how do you even get in to contest this one? Honestly, it's down to 8k as Mako moves forward. Tien there as Flandre trying to zone the rest of the team. 369 now on the top side of the play, trying to flank. 4k on the Baron. JDG not willing to just flip it. Missing finds the engage on two as Mako flashes out safety. Oh. Kree got himself out as well, but Konami only a kick onto one. And Jackie Love turns onto the enemy jungler. Tien tanking on the front side and Top Esports finally get a good start to a fight. Flandre with another knockup though as Kree gets over to safety. There's no follow up from the rest of the team. Flandre gets one, but 369 answers onto missing. Top Esports looking for ruler next. He's desperate to escape both sums and he will walk away, but Top Esports Sports turn to Baron. Top Esports pull JDG into a choke point and just hammer on them one by one unrelentlessly, like you said. That is potentially going to lead to a Baron because they're hoping to dissuade this. Yagao and Ruler, the carries dive in, flash from Ruler. Yagao uses his ult defensively, but that's so much used from JDG. Oh. Is it an ult? Kree is just going to dive to Baron! What a fumble as Yagao takes a solo kill. Jackie Love diving forwards, and they will answer. This is suddenly carnage. This is suddenly a massive head scratcher for both sides. As walking away in the end, I guess TS feeling a little, a little better. They found more kills out of that. They stopped what was originally intended to be a JDG Baron, but still no, no, neither side able to convert that into the neutral objective itself. I feel like Top Esports going, look, we're, we're, we're losing the slow game. Let's just run at them and see what happens. Really weird fight coming out for both teams, honestly. Yeah, and you, you can see the idea of wanting to send it right onto the Corky, take him out once again. But with the Flash, they're not able to close the distance. There's kind of this like human wall separating the rest of them. And then Kanabi's isolated. The Sonic Wave couldn't connect onto Cream to follow up. He gets taken down. And again, look, Flandre spent so long getting out of the fight this whole time. He isn't there absorbing the damage, allowing the others to unload. And again, it really just feels like one by one, members of JDG really running into the top esports meat grinder. <laughs> this by Cream, though, much. I don't have words. I mean, it's a little bit unlucky that 369 had peeled off just in that moment, but also I feel like that was a pretty predictable movement from 369. Uh, yeah, I got getting caught. At least they trade, but yeah, Cream, this Corky game is just not it. I'm telling you, it, it, it is a league-wide curse. Just, it, it can't be done. Just stay away, yeah. but I love that we're not staying away from the Baron. Cream does have TP. He's the only member who's very far away. Join at any moment. You'd assume he's probably waiting for yeah. his package. 369 doesn't have a ward here. It's down to 4k. Are they just going to take this one before anyone gets oh. in? JDG grab it on the 50-50. 369 is onto the fight line, though. And Ruler demolished as Top Esports looking for the fight. Kanabi gets out of the top side of the pivot. He's on the wrong side of the map. He dives back into the action and surely will fall. He at least gets the enemy jungler. Cream will fall too. But it's an ace for Top Esports. All the Barons are now off the board right after they happen. Mid lane turret up for the taking. What will be soul point for TS is right behind them, man. They have taken everything on the map. This game got real weird. And now Top Esports in the middle of all of this chaos. I mean, chaos is their comfort zone from long ago. It feels like they're finally coming out on top and now onto the Drake once again. Let's take another look and try to pick apart some of the action. Oh, how does 369 just find Ruler by himself? 
Oh, every Yagao, especially everyone jumping away right when the all-in comes through from the Urigot. I love the flash to make sure that the fear gets off onto other members too, and then they are just locked in. Kanabi tries to, to get back in the fray. I guess, really, he, he maybe would have been able to escape anyway. It wouldn't have made a big deal, but my god, Ruler really getting isolated and left alone there by his friends. Yeah, I mean... I hate to see it. <laughs> 316 just walks it in menacingly and Ruler doesn't have a flash. What is he going to do about it, realistically? Great pickup there by 369. Great fight from Top Esports. Cream gets big damage done as well, but Jackie Lowe kind of unnoticed through a lot of that fight and unnoticed through a lot of this game, it feels like, but you can see that off the back of that fight, no longer unnoticeable. Five, zero, and four. He's on three and a half items, almost at that fourth item mark now. Top Esports. I mean, they played a very long waiting game in this one, and it might just have paid off. Yeah, actually, Mark, fight just picked up by Jackie Love. More damage and, you know, more opportunities to, to save or absolutely send Mako into the fray. Like you said, Jackie Love's kind of been, kind of been, you know, on the lowdown in this game. This game, the, the fights, it's been a lot of, you know, the big setup people. Mako throwing out his ultimates. Obviously, 369 finding easy access to the back line, but Jackie Love luckily always being there and really never in any threat. Uh, from Kanavi or Flandre in the same way that 369 and TN are putting on the back line has just been huge for him. Now it feels like we're just going to wait for that next Drake to be on the map, and TS is going to try and keep control over that bot lane river really cemented until that point. This Axiom mark as well, something we have seen a couple of times from Callista's coming on through. It's, yep. not, it, it's not a champion that you necessarily like think, oh yeah, it's all about ultimate timing, but honestly, when you've got an engaged support, when you it gives you the ability to play so much more aggressively around vision, around these team fights as well. So valuable for them. It means Mako will be that much more difficult to punish. We've seen Pays playing it, we've seen Elk playing it a little bit. It's not, it's still, you know, not the, the absolute go to item, but in the right situation, you can find huge value, and it feels like this is the right situation. Yeah, again, if you're going to hopefully open up Mako to just try and engage as often as he wants. And, and when you're up against the range, that's what you're hoping to do. Uh, so right now, JDG, I think, have been doing a solid job just playing out this default map state, but they might open themselves up to being collapsed on. Yagao slowed by the solar flare. Mako flashes to get the engage, but Konami denies the follow-up from Jackie Love. Fate's called to save Mako's life. 369 TP's in, and oh. that's a huge pop blossom. It's only onto two in the end. The knockups are there. Mako not tanky enough, and he goes down. Chains land onto Cream as well, and the follow-up is there from JDG. They finally find their moment. 369 can't finish the job, and JDG come roaring into life. And all of them somehow survive. Now we got 40 second death timers on our carries. JDG, they might go for this. Tian can't do anything about this one. They should be able to end the game here. Still 30 second death timers. And thank goodness, JDG show up in this second series, in this rematch. Tian underneath the Nexus Towers, the minion wave arriving. Missing will fall, but he's happy to sacrifice himself and get a game on the board. They will not repeat the last matchup. They put themselves even in the series. It's so nice to see them able to bring it back in the very end. That game, I mean, Chaos really was the name of the game. Much you it perfectly in the cast, like so back and forth. But it's nice to see JDG able to keep up, right? Had some moments where they outplayed TS and overall the individual performances were much better this time. Yeah, definitely. I, I, just the map play change was was the most significant yeah. thing to me from JDG. Like, it feels like they had way much more control, and part of that is down to the draft. Part of that, I think, down to this corky pick in specific. But um, re really, really nice stuff coming out from JDG, answering a lot of the strength the top esports have been bringing to the table. We're going to go into a break. I'm going to kick it over to the, the analyst lounge. I keep nearly saying desk. We're going to kick it over to the lounge to try and break down 